my husband and I just moved from Virginia to California. Yay! A 14 hour day of driving. Wow, we drove until two in the morning. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Caitlin if you're new here and I owe you a little bit of an explanation if you are a subscriber of mine already because I have been MIA for the last, I believe, two weekends of uploading. And that is because if you've seen my previous videos, my husband and I just moved from Virginia to California, yay! And we're so, so, so excited. Um, but this is our first like big move. The first move that we ever did as a couple, we literally only had like bags of suitcases to our name. Um, so this is our first time moving furniture and we actually ended up doing a cross country road trip, which I did vlog, as I said I was going to in my previous video, my Valentine's Day lookbook video. But the thing is, is the vlog footage was really not that great or entertaining or anything for anyone. And I'm not, I'm not saying that you know, to put myself down or anything, but we, to make a long story very short, we initially decided to do five days of travel. We were gonna leave on a Monday and arrive on a Friday, but then we sort of made a deal with ourselves because we didn't make any accommodations along the way. We made a deal with ourselves that, hey, if we feel like we can keep pushing, like let's keep pushing because it's better to get there on Friday, not after eight hours of driving. Like maybe if we could only get there after a few hours of driving on Friday morning, that would be better. And we actually ended up doing, <clears throat> excuse me, four days of driving, a 10 hour day, a 12 hour day, a 14 hour day of driving. Wow, we drove until two in the morning and our last day was a six hour driving day. And then we arrived on Thursday night, spent a night in a hotel and we ended up checking into our, or checking in, <laughs> it's not a hotel, it's a house, but we ended up doing the walkthrough of our house and getting the keys on Friday after having spent the night in a hotel, which was so much better. But I just wanted to sort of give a little, back, a bit of background about my, experience with today's topic which is how to do a PCS or a permanent change of station move in 2021 and I will say that because this was my first PCS I'm not going to be or I shouldn't be your number one source of information if you're watching this and you are in the military that information should be coming from your unit if you are a spouse of someone who's in the military like myself that information should be coming from your spouse from their unit because Something that my husband and I learned along the way is that a lot of the decisions that you're gonna end up making as to how you want to make this move happen for you, it depends on where you live prior to the move, where you're leaving from, it depends on where you're going to, like are you gonna stay in the United States, is it very close by, is it overseas, you know, all that good stuff. Um, and it also depends on like your kids if you have any, pets, cars, all that good stuff. So I am going to keep this very vague a lot of the specifics about how you're actually going to execute your move are most likely going to be personal to you um, but i did want to give some general tips so without further ado let's go ahead and get started so the first tip is be realistic about what you can actually accomplish and to be very clear about the move that you want to do so i guess that's kind of two tips in one so there are two different types of moves that you can do you can either move by yourself or just like as a family or you can have the government move you and there are some nuances to that situation like I've heard of things where like the government moves you but you pack the U-Haul or you know just other little situations where it's not exactly so black and white of you do it or they do it but the reason I'm saying this is because up until about two weeks before the move which is very last minute and I do not like last minute things so this stressed me out I ended up being okay. Um, we had decided, uh, Mario, my husband, had put into the DMO website that we were going to have the military move us. And the only reason why we didn't end up doing that is because we got a call from DMO, the, I believe it's distribution management office. I should know that because I'm making this video. I'll put the acronym up here. Um, but we found out that if we had the military move us or the government move us, it would've, we would have, we would not have had our stuff for 28 days. And, that was just not gonna be okay with us. We didn't wanna live in like a very stressful environment of like having nowhere to sleep. And then like, we weren't gonna buy a mattress if we already owned one, but like, we're not gonna sleep on an air mattress for 28 days. And the guy did tell my husband that that was sort of a weird circumstance because of the year 
but what is going on in the world in the years 2020 2021 um so that was like whoa pump the brakes like oh my gosh so at the very last second we ended up switching to doing it ourselves and again everything ended up okay we were able to get a u-haul no problem but and we were able to change everything in the dmo website no problem but do all of your research beforehand unlike what with ha what happened to us i mean to be fair we were both working i was working nine to five my husband was obviously in a training environment so he was very very busy um so don't be like us make your decision way farther than two weeks ahead and even if you think you've made your decision check up on it make sure that there's no little hidden things that you don't know about like the fact that your stuff's not going to be with you for 28 days uh, before you make your decision and then the other part that i brought up which is be realistic with what you can actually accomplish so this is where i'm getting a little bit over into packing so my husband and i if you haven't seen our apartment tour from our last place i would highly recommend watching it i'll link it up above because um, as I've mentioned a few times already, I'm going to make a series out of decorating and furnishing all the different rooms in this place. We moved from a two bedroom apartment to a three bedroom, two and a half bathroom, two story house, which was a huge upgrade for us. And we're super grateful for it. Um, but we were like, oh, like we only have two bedrooms. And if you see the apartment tour, like we didn't do that much by way of decorating. Like we had all the furniture we needed and we told ourselves, we're like, oh, you know, we're not gonna, we're not gonna take all of the stuff because most of the furniture we got was like freebies from like the side of the road or like Goodwill or hand-me-downs from family members. So we were like, oh, we're not gonna keep all of it. You know, we can pack this U-Haul in like a day. That was wishful thinking. And I don't know why I thought that because I'm someone who's like very, very into planning, but it took us two and a half days and that took one full day of assistance from my in-laws, my brother-in-law and his girlfriend, Jane. And even then it was like the morning of the move and we were still putting stuff in. It wasn't stressful. Like we gave ourselves breaks and everything. It wasn't just like nonstop, but be so realistic about what you can do. Like we don't have dogs, we don't have kids, we don't have, we have a cat, but he was just minding his business the whole time. But like, don't be like us and be like, yeah, we got this. Especially if you are not gonna have moving help like we did, we're so lucky that we had that, but be realistic. And this is kind of like a little sub tip that I want to throw in there. Um, something that my husband and I were joking about, but when it comes to your move, double the budget and triple the time that you think that it's going to take. And I just explained the time factor of it, but the budget part, yes, for sure. Um, double the budget. And luckily part of doing a personal move is that we do get reimbursed for the cost of the move, um, which I'll get into a little bit later, but there were some things that we were just like, like even things that you don't think about. So like, for example, like, you know that you're gonna buy boxes, you know, you're getting the U-Haul, you know, you know, you're gonna pay for gas, but like even in the days leading up to the move, we'd packed our kitchen stuff. So like we were eating out a lot. And then we also like um, bought food for the people that were helping us move, for the family that was helping us move, um, obviously <laughs> to say thank you. But we were just like, I was looking at our um, bank statement, like after the move to make sure there was no suspicious activity because we had been spending our debit cards all across the country. Um, and like up the three days before our move, it was like Chick-fil-A, Wawa, Poke Bowls, Panera. Like it was just like double the budget for sure. Um, and you just never know if anything else is gonna come up. Like I believe my husband actually had to pay to weigh the U-Haul. I might be making that up, but just double the budget, triple the time, trust me. Okay, and this next one is pretty self-explanatory. I sort of got into it a little bit before, but don't bring anything that you know for sure you're not gonna need. And we had, like I said, we had already planned this. We knew we weren't gonna keep all of our furniture. We decided we were just gonna keep the furniture that we knew we would need. And that still was like great. Like our mattress that we had um, in our old apartment, it was a brand new mattress when we got it the first time, we took that. But like, for example, our couch, it, it was a side of the road find by I think my in-laws that they gave to us. And like my cat had scratched it to hell. It was definitely, excuse me, it was like sinking in because it was so old. And that is something that would have taken up a lot of room in the U-Haul if we decided to keep it. But we knew that we wanted to replace it anyway, so we just didn't bring it. And you might be thinking like, duh, Caitlin, that's so obvious. But the type of move that we did, which was a self move, the way you get paid is the you weigh the U-Haul when it's empty and then you weigh the U-Haul when it's full after it's been packed. And the the DMO office calculates what we get reimbursed as the pounds times the miles traveled. So we did like, I think it was like 4,000 pounds times about 2,000 miles traveled. So we are gonna get a pretty hefty reimbursement for that. Um, so, you know, when we were packing the U-Haul, we were like, oh, we're gonna add 
everything so that we can like get the weight up even if we're just gonna throw it away after a month of living there and if we had done that we would have not had room for the stuff that we actually needed and cared about like the things that take up a lot of room but you don't really think would like all of my husband's uniforms and the cooking stuff and the office stuff and the you know there's just a lot of things that will take up room that you do care about so definitely pack all the things that you care about first and then at the end if you're iffy on stuff you have the option to put it in if there's still room or you can get rid of it okay so this next tip you don't have to do but i would definitely consider thinking about it if you are not in a situation like we were when we knew that like literally 90 percent of our furniture that we had which wasn't even that much to begin with we wanted to get rid of and either not take or um you know get rid of after we moved and that is to get a bigger u-haul than you think you need so we got a 20 foot u-haul which is on the bigger end of u-hauls there are definitely bigger the reason we got a 20 footer is because my husband had never driven a u-haul before he drove a u-haul i drove our pickup truck i was tailing him and he got a 20 footer because he decided you know i've never driven a u-haul before we're gonna be like flying across the country like i'm gonna go for the sake of his comfort driving it he decided to go smaller rather than bigger then get like a 22 footer i believe there honestly are bigger sizes than that i'm not 100 percent sure but after we packed the 20 footer we were like like it was it was a stretch like we were really really cramming stuff in there and he was like dang i should have got the 22 footer especially because we we're just going to get reimbursed for it so if you are in a situation where you have a lot of things that you know you want to keep where it's not like oh this is trash anyway i'm just going to get rid of it get a bigger u-haul than you think you need like it's just not really possible to like take a visual inventory of all the things you own and be like ah yes this is going to fit into this size u-haul it kind of goes along with double the budget triple the time it's like double the budget triple the time double the size of like the shipping container you think you need so definitely if you're unsure size one up like shoes okay this is a more general tip that could apply to regular moves and not just military moves which i feel like a lot of these tips honestly could apply to both but you know the only thing about this move that made it a military move is that we are getting reimbursed so honestly it was kind of just like a regular move but we're getting our money back um but my next tip is to not cheap out on boxes and when I was first doing my research on where to get boxes, because obviously, you know, once all the furniture's away, you have a lot more stuff than you think you have. And um, I was reading all these forums that were like, places you can get boxes for free. And it was like, you can go to your local grocery store and get boxes. And like, I think that's a good idea. Like it was, it was a whole bunch of places like Staples, Target, like places that obviously receive boxes when they receive product and then they get rid of them after. And I'm actually gonna caution you against this, and here's why. So we actually ended up buying brand new boxes from U-Haul, and I would highly, highly, highly recommend going the route of buying new boxes, doesn't have to be from U-Haul, rather than trying to score free ones, and here's why. So the U-Haul boxes, we got a, a set that you, that you can order online, it's like a complete set, and it was designated for one to two bedroom homes and apartments and if i can find a picture of the online listing i'll go ahead and put it here but we bought that and it was 200 dollars. and the boxes were excellent condition they had all these like other features that you wouldn't think about that like a box would need like you know carrying handles and special boxes that you could hang your clothes in like wardrobe boxes and like small boxes and big boxes and glass packers and a flat screen tv wrap and like that plastic wrap that you can put around like our standing mirror and it was it really had everything it had it only had two rolls of tape and i was like that's not gonna be enough tape it was enough tape it was more than enough tape we actually didn't even use all the boxes we still have like a whole an open thing of like five to ten small size boxes in our garage that we can sell back to u-haul and that's another thing if you buy from u-haul i'm not sure about other places like i know home depot does boxes but u-haul actually will buy back your boxes um, as long as they haven't been used before and if you have used your boxes before and they're u-haul boxes u-haul will actually um, take them in i don't think they'd buy them back if they've already been used but there are and there are options to I guess U-Haul has a program where you can like pick up boxes at certain sites that have been used before. I mean, I don't even know how much I recommend that because um, another reason why I wouldn't recommend going the route of like grocery store boxes is because if a box has already been used, it's not going to be nearly as stable. And like you care about your stuff, right? So like go for the boxes that aren't damp, that have already been folded, that have already been broken down one time and then you have to tape them all up to put them back together. 
bite the bullet, go for the brand new boxes. I am personally recommending U-Haul, but just Home Depot, maybe even Lowe's, I don't know, but go ahead and buy your own boxes. Another thing about the um, getting free boxes from stores is that it's kind of a hustle. Like the way that people were describing it online was like, oh, you have to go at a certain hour and you have to make sure you catch them before you throw them away and there might be other people there. And like, I respect the hustle for something free. I absolutely do. Um, but it's just like, like I said, we were both working nine to five jobs, him longer than nine to five. And he wasn't even, you know, within the same zip code as me at the time. And like, I don't have the time to go hunt down already used, probably slightly soggy boxes. So buy U-Haul boxes. Okay, so this next tip, I'm gonna try my best to not go on a little rant here, but it is to make a housing plan well in advance. And I know that this is not always possible um, depending on where you're moving to. Um, and this tip, make your housing plan well in advance, goes for both if you're deciding to live on base or wherever the installation is that you're moving to or off base. And I'm saying this because we thought we had our housing all good to go. And then within like two weeks before we were leaving, actually it was a week before we were leaving, we found out that the house wouldn't work for us. So here's what happened. I pre-ordered a dress online that said it was not going to arrive until April. And at the time I was ordering the dress, we had already known what was going to be our address. It's not where we're currently living. We had already known that address for like a month. We like made our housing plan in advance. We were like, we had a place to go. And the package, interestingly enough, ended up arriving like three weeks before we were supposed to move. And I was like, oh my gosh, like what am I gonna do? Like it's just sitting on the doorstep. It's gonna be there for, three weeks plus the one week it's gonna take us to drive, like that's not good. So I called the housing office or I emailed them and I said, hey, weird mix up, this is what happened. And they were like, no problem, it happens all the time. Here's your package, we picked it up. Come get the package from us, super, super helpful. Um, by the way, here's pictures of your house. And they sent us photos of the outside of the house and it was a one story house, which is not a problem. I don't care like how many floors a house had. We only cared about the bedrooms and bathroom situation. Online on the housing website, it showed layouts for like each type of house. Like if you lived in this community and you have a two story, three bedroom, two bath house, this is the floor plan of your house. And like, if you're living in this community and you live in a one story, two bedroom, three ho bathroom house, this is what it looks like. And the reason I was doing that research is because I was getting like really excited to do like my decorating and stuff. And I realized that the one story houses, the only pictures they had available online were all handicap accessible. And before anyone thinks that I'm like trying to like talk down on handicap accessible houses, I'm absolutely not. But the thing is, is the military, handicap accessible houses have to follow certain guidelines because it is, you know, a part of a government organization. And it meant that half of the kitchen cabinets were ripped out um, on the lower half because obviously then someone could access the sink and like wheel into there. And all the bathrooms had like, um, you know, when you go into a bathroom, a public restroom and it has like that other sink on the side that is wheelchair accessible. And there were railings all over the walls and Again, I'm not trying to like poo poo that cause like I was so grateful that we were able to get a place to live. But like Mario and I talked about it and we were just like, you know what? Like they didn't disclose this information to us. They didn't tell us that half of our kitchen cabinetry was gonna be missing. They didn't tell us that our bathrooms were um, like all covered in rails and just like very um, not necessary for our situation and we also were thinking like you know what like what if someone needs that house that you know actually needs to have a wheelchair accessible house that's not us and we're taking that house away from them and it also like i said just didn't sit right with us that the housing people had never told us about it we don't think that they were doing it maliciously we just think that they were so busy and that they just i don't know it just i'm just gonna move past that anyway so they did confirm that it was a handicapped house and we said, you know what, thank you so much. We're so sorry, We're this house is not gonna work for us. Um, do you have anything else available? So within the same community that we were going to live in, which is again, not the community that we currently live in, they were like, oh, cool, that's fine. We understand, you know, sorry about the confusion. Here is in the same community, a two bedroom, three bathroom house with two stories. And we were like, cool, sounds great, awesome. We're signing the lease paperwork again. And we get a call from the housing people saying, wait, you guys have a cat? Like, yeah, we told you we had a cat when we applied like a month ago to get this house. Like he's Pickles, our cat, we've told you about him. He, he exists, we told you about him. And they were like, oh, uh, actually the community that these houses are in, the community that by the way, they told us we were eligible for, even after we had told them, you know, we had a cat. This community doesn't allow cats. 
So we're gonna have to move, move you to a different community. And by this time, we were literally leaving in two days to like go to California. And so we were going to California and we didn't even have our physical address as to the house that we were arriving at. So now we are at a different house in a different community. It is perfect in every way. We are so, so happy to be here. But <laughs> to get back to the tip I was originally talking about, make your housing plan well in advance. Be your best advocate. Ask a lot of questions. Ask to see the outside. Ask what the layout looks like. Ask any question that you think you might have that you're like, oh no, this is silly. Because I remember thinking like, hmm, I wonder what the layout for our house is. Nah, it's fine. I'll find out when I get there. If I had not ordered that dress, which by the way, this is the dress. Um, this dress is not my new favorite dress because it saved us from living in that house. But when I say make your housing plan well in advance, do not be like us. Do not be driving to your future base or your future location and you don't even have your address yet. We literally found out the address for this place, I think the Wednesday before we arrived on a Friday. So don't do that. Ask questions, figure it out. Okay, this one is very, very brief, but make a car plan. And by that, I mean, how many cars do you have? How many cars do you plan to have at your next place? Um, and the reason I'm saying to, to actually think about it and find out what your options are is because um, before we left, when we were in Virginia, we had two cars. We have the truck that we still currently have, and we were, um, we also had an Acura that actually is my in-laws Acura, but they weren't using it and they knew we needed a second car. So we were paying them the least money for that car. And they gave us the option. They said, Hey, you know, if we're not using the Acura. Do you guys want to take it? And we were like, yeah, sure. Like, it's great. We'll keep paying the least money. We really, really enjoy it. Um, it's awesome. And so that was our original plan. Our original plan was that the Acura was going to be hooked up to the U-Haul on a trailer hitch and then I was going to be driving the truck. It wasn't until a week before we left that we found out that my husband actually does not rank getting a car transported across the country in a CONUS move, a continental United States move. Um, so luckily, because we were just borrowing that other car, all we had to do was give it back to my in-laws. But if you're in a situation where you're like in a lease or you have two cars that you own and you can only bring one or you're going across country, decide that way in advance. Um, like I said, I, we thought we had everything figured out. We did not. Luckily, we were in a situation where it wasn't a problem. We could just give the car back. But make your car plan in advance. Do you need to sell it? Do you need to break the lease? What do you need to do? Figure it out. Another thing that you need to plan in advance is your plan for your pets. And you're probably like, Caitlin, duh. Like, you, obviously you should be planning all these things in advance. But the reason I'm giving you these tips is because they're things that I learned along the way. And part of the reason why I'm saying plan for your pets is because, like I said, we found out that our cat Pickles would not have been allowed at the old community that we originally supposed to live in. Imagine if we had showed up and we hadn't, like, I hadn't ordered that dress. We would have arrived with a cat that we weren't allowed to have in a house that was handicap accessible, but it hadn't been disclosed to us. Okay. But anyway, as, um, another thing that I mean by pets is like, there are certain, unfortunately, there are certain dog breeds that are not allowed on military installations and pit bulls are one of them. We don't have a pit bull. We have friends that have a pit bull that really, really wanted to live on base, but, and they're actually stationed in the same place we are. Um, they wanted to live on base, but they were not able to because um, your dog needs to pass a DNA test proving that they're less than, I think it's 50% pit bull. So like if you have certain dog breeds, um, it's not just pit bulls too. I think there are a few others that are like considered more dangerous type dogs, which is unfair because I love pit bulls. My family has a pit bull. Anyway, um, and then also make a plan for your pets as far as like the actual transportation and how they're going to get there. So I know, for example, um, if you're moving to Hawaii or Japan, you have to make sure that your pet gets like a bunch of series of shots. They need to go through quarantine. Like some of these shots, like I was doing research on it um, before we knew where we were going. Cause like, I didn't want to not be able to bring like our cat to Japan because he hadn't gotten shots that he needed or something. Um, and there are for certain duty stations and for certain um, types of pets, like series of things that you need to have them get done, like shots or medicines or stuff like that. Um, before they're able to travel and like I said some of those can take it's like a series of shots that like happens every month for six months or something you need to do that research as far in advance as you possibly can I know it's not always possible to do it months out like some of these moves can be very last minute um, but do all the research that you ever could think that you need um, if you're really unsure of where to start just look up like 
the installation name that you're going to and like what kind of pet you have. Luckily for us, the only thing we need to do um, is to register him on base just so if he ever gets picked up for, I don't know, escaping the house or something, not that he would, um, you know, the base knows who he belongs to and he could get back to us. Um, Another thing is like, you know, that's how are you going to physically transport them? We were able to do drive pickles in the car very, very easily. He was actually weirdly very, very, very good in the car. He like slept the entire time. It was like a total angel. But like, if you have a dog, do you really want to drive cross country with them? Like, do you want to fly them? And I mean, some of these you might have to fly if you're going overseas, but make a plan. Okay, so this next one is a bit more specific to a military move, and that is to collect all of your receipts. And I mean literally all of them. So before we left, we knew that because it was a personal move that we had to collect all the receipts anyways, but I would suggest collecting all of your receipts even if you are having the government like move your stuff and then maybe you're driving there, maybe you're flying there, like do collect all of your receipts because you'd be surprised what you're able to get reimbursed for, for military moves. And so my husband was, he was so cute. He found a, a folder that we didn't have anything, um, that wasn't designated for anything yet. And he literally wrote on it orders and receipts. And so in one file or one flap, he kept his orders, which are important because if for whatever reason, like you're driving a U-Haul and you get stopped or something, um, you have your orders just so, cause you are on like official government business technically when you're doing a military move. And then on the other side, we put all of our, all of our receipts and I mean everything. I think with the exception of food, because for food, I believe DMO factors that in, like they give you like a per DM or something per person for food. So food is the only one that I don't think you need to save, but we did like the price, like buying, not buying, but we did like renting the U-Haul and we put the way tickets in there of when it was empty and when it was full. We put all the gas receipts in there. We put all the hotel receipts in there. Um, luckily, I don't think there was anything else that we needed to track, but definitely track it all. Even if you are having the government move your stuff and then you are moving yourselves there, because like I said, you will really be surprised by what DMO is able to reimburse you for. Um, my husband actually recently went to the DMO office um, after we got here and he spent a few hours like working with them to get our money back essentially. And he said he was very glad that he kept everything because there were some things in there that they will give you credit for that you don't think about. So keep all of your receipts. So my final tip is to make sure that whatever your situation is as far as medical insurance, and medical providers is to make sure that that is transferred over to your new location. And again, you're probably like, Caitlin, duh. But the reason that I'm saying this is because <laughs> TRICARE, which is the main provider for military spouses and veterans and active duty military members and all that good stuff, they are not the best as far as like customer service. You know, the customer service is pretty good. I'm not gonna say that. As far as like user friendliness, like when I first, called and talked to them about like the fact that we were moving, what do I need to do? I was told, oh, don't worry about it. Like you're attached to your husband's orders, right? So like your personal um, health provider, like your general practitioner basically, oh, you'll it'll just change over automatically. Cause if you're not familiar, there is an online portal that spouses have access to and anyone else that has TRICARE has have access to where it tells you like who your current provider is and all that good stuff. And I obviously was still assigned to a Quantico provider. And we get to California and I realize, wow, like I really need to get a prescription and I can't go back to my old doctor, obviously, because I'm now in California and I, it was, I was out of refills for my prescription as well. So it needed to be re-prescribed to me um, by a doctor. And so if you have a time sensitive prescription or anything like that, make sure you either work with your practitioner that you have before you move to like get a lot of the prescription in advance if that's possible because they are going to be pretty accommodating the only reason why i wasn't able to do that is because my um general health practitioner um changed like three weeks before the move and so it was just like i'm not even gonna deal with that i'll just i'm not gonna like have my doctor that i had for like a year and a half and then like this one random person in the middle to re-prescribe me something and then the new doctor in california so if you are in a situation where you have prescriptions that you need to take regularly or that you're running low on or any other medical conditions where you know you're going to need to see a doctor call tricare even before you move so like i thought that it was going to switch over automatically because that's what i was told and then when i noticed it wasn't switching over and i was like dang i really need to get these prescriptions i called tricare again the woman was like yeah 
you were given bad information. We need to change it on our end. And it was so easy. It was like a quick phone call. She just did some paperwork on her end, but I was on hold. And then bada bang, bada boom, I had a new, <laughs> bada bing, bada boom. I had a new um, doctor within like 10 minutes of calling. So I don't know why I said TRICARE had bad customer service. That's not true. Um, but just make sure you get all that squared away in advance because now I'm able to very quickly and easily get my prescription refilled. And I don't even have to worry about it. So guys, I'm sorry I've been so fidgety. I am on the floor. Like I said, there's no furniture in this room. And that, I guess, is how I'm gonna wrap up my video. I hope it was helpful for you guys. I know that I have a lot of military spouses watching because I get emails from you guys and messages and stuff all the time. So thank you so much for that. Please don't be afraid to reach out to me. But if you want a response from me, please, please, please reach out to me over on my Instagram. Here it is, at Caitlin Mahina. I do love the emails. I've gotten a, a few very wordy emails from you guys, which is awesome. But I just, you know, I have a lot of things flying through my inbox right now because of business stuff and you know dealing with the move and ordering furniture and like I just don't want your messages to get lost so if you have a question please 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 I will only I'm just gonna put my foot down honestly I will only respond to Instagram DMs unless you don't have an Instagram then feel free to email me but just know you know, if I get an email that's very lengthy, I'm not always gonna have the time right away to like sit down and write it out and respond to it as I should. Um, so that is that. Like I said, please go ahead and follow me over on my Instagram if you haven't already. My Instagram is about to pop off. Like it's gonna be so good. Um, I've already got so much content and stuff planned for March because if you do not know, if you do not catch it at the end of my last video, I am now a full-time content creator. Which brings me to my next point actually. I probably should have said this in the intro, but I will now be uploading videos every Monday and every Thursday instead of just on Sundays. Um, I'm so, so grateful to have this opportunity. So if you liked this video, please go ahead and liked it if it was helpful for you. And if you haven't already, please go ahead and click the subscribe button down below. I typically do fashion, lifestyle, beauty, hopefully in the future, travel type content. Um, I don't typically focus this much on military spouse stuff. That's just because that has been the center of my life for the past month. Just the fact that I'm a military spouse and all of the good stuff that comes with it. So that is the end of my video. I hope you have a great rest of your day and I will see you on Thursday. Bye.